Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. I haven't done this in a long time and I love it and I'm returning back to it. And basically what this is, is an intuitive read for the month to come. And in this case, it is August <clears throat> 2019. So what I wanna do is I want to pull some cards for the month of August as a whole. This is energy that we can all tap into, that we're all collectively sharing. And then I'm gonna break down each of the zodiac signs. So you wanna check your sun sign, your rising sign, and your moon sign. The timestamps will be down below. I'm not gonna take any more time to kind of explain this because I feel like it's pretty much self explanatory uh, self-explanatory let's go ahead and dive right in to cover the entire month of August as a collective as a whole we have this card of eternal love and it's so beautiful to see that for me it's so beautiful to see that because one of the last videos that I put up on my YouTube the title was connected to eternal love and this idea of eternal love is something that cannot be taken away from you or removed it's with you regardless of the circumstances now i understand that for so many of us the six months you know from january until july have really tested our patience it tested our faith i'm seeing this a lot when i'm working one-on-one -on -one with my clients when i'm doing a reading for them or when i'm working on an oil for them and working magic and intention I can see it I can feel it on their spirit that their energy their vibration feels really low and it's because this can come from a space of feeling defeated and disappointed and um, really what I'm seeing for this month of August is listening back to yourself listening back to your heart and almost like negating what has happened kind of looking at that and removing yourself from the frustration, removing yourself from the obstacles, because as we're moving forward into the next six months, now I am looking at the month of August, but for some reason I'm hyper-focused on the next six months. What I'm seeing and what I'm feeling is what has previously occurred for the majority, the majority of us was there to show us our strength and to test our patience. Now, I know for a lot of us, we're like, stop testing me <laughs> like universe divine god stop testing me have i not already proven myself but in the eyes of the divine you know it's not that these circumstances are set into motion to test you and to you know hurt you it really is set into motion in order to help you to shed the old these old ways of thinking this old ways of doing stuff to make you more self-sufficient being self-sufficient doesn't mean that you are relying on yourself only exclusively, that you don't need anybody else, that you're isolating yourself from the rest of the world or, for asking, or from asking for, for help. It's learning to be in a space where you are connecting, you're, you're deepening your connection to the divine, you're deepening your connection to yourself, but not that that also, doing that doesn't simultaneously, simultaneously mean that you disconnect from the other. Now, for some of you guys, you are being called and you have been called to separate yourself from friendships, from coworkers, from certain expectations, from aspects of yourself, from your relationships, like intimate relationships. And that has happened and it almost feels like punishment. You realize that you're doing it and that it is being called into your life to make you a stronger person, to make you a better person, but at the same time, it honestly feels like a little bit of punishment. It feels like the universe is punishing you and for what? You've done nothing wrong. So instead of almost, um, what I'm seeing for the month of August is instead of looking at the circumstances as, oh, I've been, I'm being punished and this is what August is going to look like. Like hopefully August is going to be better. It is going to be better. Again, we have this card of eternal love and I just see that anything that was removed from you it almost is connecting me back to the infinity sign the all this energy you know at the top of this magician card this infinite sign the infinity sign at the top it's about connecting into that that space of anything that was removed it comes back around in another form including the aspects of myself that I have evolved I'm transformed and for that I am gonna step in own my power this is the card of the magician 
that is the power of the magician it's about I am shedding and I'm releasing the old I am self-sufficient now I know what I want I'm gonna step into my power I'm gonna step into my strength I'm going to shed all of what has happened it's been irritating me regardless I'm gonna shed it I'm gonna wipe it off I'm gonna cleanse myself and I'm gonna step totally into my power I'm gonna trust my power why because at one point I was powerless and now in that moment when I was powerless I actually connected deeper to my own personal power I don't need to isolate myself from anyone or anything I just I've learned to have firmer boundaries I've learned to be more direct I've learned to be more firm I've learned to listen and to not speak all the time. I don't need to convince others of my worth. I don't need to convince others of my value because I know who I am. That's what the month of August is going to be like for so many of us. It's about calling in what is eternally yours, what is given to you, what is written for you in the stars and stepping into a space of owning that setting making wishes like what is your intention? What is your wish? What is your greatest desire of your heart? When we see eternal love, it's you really are tapping into that and I'm seeing for many of us we're going into a space of meditation during like these new moon and full moon cycles it's almost as if the universe is giving us permission to be quiet to be still so that we can reconnect with our heart again and reconnect and listen and listen to what our energy needs what our spirit needs so that we can call it back in once again again this is all about being um, open to receiving from the divine. This is also, for some reason, I feel like, I almost feel like you wanna punish God or you wanna punish the divine or punish the universe because you feel like you've been punished. But it's almost like going back to God and going back to the universe, going back to yourself and being like, you know what, I forgive you, I forgive, and, I, and by forgiving it means like, okay, this made me angry, this made me upset. I understand why you did it. I understand that's for my highest and greatest good, but at the same time, I'm still kind of defeated and disappointed in this. But I'm going to come back to you, and instead of whipping out and lashing out at you, I'm going to thank you for showing me my own strength, but I'm also going to ask you and call out that the month of August be different. Connect me back to what is mine. Connect me back to what is infinite, that infinite source of abundance. That's what the month of August is all about and trust that like really release all of what has happened and trust all that's going to occur and all that can occur because we're also seeing the nine of cups here and I feel I'm showing you this card because I feel like for so many of you guys you need the confirmation and you need to clearly see it to know what can manifest when we have the magician card and the nine of cups the world is our oyster we can manifest anything we just need to know it we need to speak it we need to trust and we need to make sure that our minds are in this space of emptiness and discord and chaos that we've removed ourselves from that we've reconnected and we're not lashing out at the universe and trying to punish the universe because we ourselves feel like we've been punished okay so now let's go ahead and go break down into each of the signs starting with Aries first okay Aries <laughs> The word that comes through for me, for you, is self-respect. I don't know why that is, but I'm really seeing the universe, angels, guide spirit, asking you to kind of retreat and to, it's so funny because I don't want to say isolate, but it's, um, cause especially with the overall general reading, that message, that overall message that I just shared, I, I was saying self-sufficiency doesn't mean that you isolate. For some reason, Aries, I'm seeing you kind of going on your own and going into a, a retreat center or going into a space of retreat. This is for your mental well-being. This is because you've needed it. Um, I see Aries always as my assertive, my dominant, my aggressor, my leader of the zodiac, of course, but the stars and the universe are giving you permission now to enter into a space of calmness. I think that when you retreat, you are going to, not I think, I know, when you retreat into a space where you're going back, um, I don't say isolating, but it's like this vacation or this like disconnect from the external, disconnect from what other people expect of you. It's because you always give energy all the time, like you're always doing the most in a good way and people can expect that from you, but at some point enough is enough and you need to kind of connect with spirit again and mentally give yourself a break and retreat and calm and center. For some of you guys, this actually is taking a vacation or taking a trip or going on a spiritual retreat where it requires you to move over water and move 
or fly. For others, I'm seeing this as, um, you know, just going home or going to a sacred space or going to a yoga studio, something that disconnects you from the regular environment and moves you into a new environment. And you have to do this now. It's it's very much it's very important and imperative to your mental well-being that you're taking this time for yourself that you're retreating. When you do retreat, it's like you're connecting with spirit, you're connecting with your internal guidance, you're connecting with cos the cosmos, astrology. Look at your astrology chart. It almost just seems as though the stars have been guiding you to kind of go into like 12th house mode or 6th house mode or third, even your third house of calming the brain down. But it's an erratic fast. Sorry about that, Aries. For some reason, my camera cut out. But like I was saying, I just am seeing this decision. It's a clear-cut decision, almost erratic, maybe... It almost kind of reminds me, <laughs> my friends and I were just laughing about this, where you go to a party and you know, you're having a good time and everybody expects you to be the life of the party, but you kind of decide, I need to go home, I don't need, I don't need to be here anymore, and you ask for, to go to the bathroom, or where's the bathroom at, and they point in the direction, and you just get in your car and you go home. That's almost what it is that I'm seeing, that it's like everybody expects you to kind of bring the energy, to bring the noise, to bring the fire, to bring enthusiasm, and in order to give yourself self-respect, in order to respect yourself, you're like, I actually need calmness right now, I need to retreat, I need to, ment this is for my mental mental well-being and the planets, the stars, the cosmos, there is this connection to astrology that's kind of encouraging you, pulling you to focus, to retreat it so that you can fill your cup up, so that you can be filled and connect back to hope. It almost seems like you're kind of second guessing yourself, you're second guessing your worth because you give so much of your energy into these new projects in order to maintain that energy you know, you have to give to yourself, and I'm seeing a retreat. So Aries, that's what I'm seeing for the month of August. You have my permission to disconnect. You don't need to tell anybody why you're doing it. You just need to do it. All right, so we are ready to move on to Taurus. So my Taurus babies, what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling is I feel like mentally for the month of August, I feel like you're going to be or you have the potential to be your own worst enemy. I think that... This is fear, worst case scenario thinking. I think, and not I think, I know, because we have the Eight of Swords here and the three of, three of Pentacles. And when we see this, it's like our own brains can think the worst because we want to expect the worst or we're doubting it. We are not confident in ourselves because of, for whatever reason, there's insecurity, there's doubt, there has, there's hesitation. I'm seeing that there's this new space that it is that you're called to walk towards. It could be a relationship. And when I say relationship, it doesn't necessarily have to be intimate relationship. It could be a business partnership because it's anything that you want to invest in, that other people want to invest in you because they find you worthy. But for whatever reason, you can't see that within yourself. And it is something that you have set intention for. This is a time for you to almost whip yourself into shape and to... Be very mindful about the words that you're thinking and how you speak to yourself because you hear yourself. Your subconscious is listening to the words that you that you use to, to converse with yourself. So I don't know what this is. I'm almost getting like a mirroring um, healing exercise activity that I'm seeing my Taurus is doing where you have to kind of look at yourself in the mirror and every day almost do like affirmations and look yourself deep in the eyes and see the truth of yourself which is your power, your potential, it's limitless. You almost have to, Taurus, you almost have to speak more confidence in yourself and use your voice with it. It's something that you, I'm feeling like you need to hear, like you actually need to hear it. And it may sound so stupid, you know, to others, or you may even think like, oh my God, that's so dumb for me to say this out loud. It's not dumb, it's healing. You need to hear what, you need to hear the truth. You actually have to hear it. Now, I'm seeing that this is something that you need to say to yourself, a mantra, over and over and over again, and it's going to help you to move out of, it. no, not to move out of, but move into the next level of this next fertile role that is blossoming in your life, and there needs to be balance there. If you are calling in a partner, whether it's business, a friendship, um, a, a doctor, a healer, or 
a relationship, like an intimate partner, you want to make sure that your energy is matching what it is that you wish to attract, even if it's a stu even if it's a teacher, because you need to be ready to listen. You need to be ready to hear so that your energy matches that that you're going to learn the most from that teacher. Let's say it's a relationship. These are things that you're setting intention for. Admit the truth to yourself that you need to build your confidence right now. Admit the truth to yourself that your mentality is a little weakened right now. It's a little weakened state and that's okay because we've all been there. I myself, I'll have moments where I am my worst enemy. I'm a Virgo. I have to really be mindful of my thoughts and my thinking and the same thing is true for you. What am I t what are you telling yourself? What are you hearing about yourself? So, when you step into this space where you are finally confident and this is an everyday exercise. I don't see you doing this like one one and done. It's an everyday exercise that you're teaching yourself to build your confidence again. That's when you can be assertive. That's when you can set the intention. That's when you can find the partner that matches your vibration. Right now, this is about building it up and seeing that, you know what, you might have been blocking yourself from people who want to invest in you and want to give to you. And when you admit that truth, it actually opens the door for you to fixing that quote unquote problem. So that's what I'm seeing for you, Taurus, is you are setting intention but make sure that what you're setting intention for is matches the potential of who you are truly to your core because the last thing I want you to do is to call out to the universe and receive less than what it is that you deserve. I think that if you admitted the truth to yourself you would see that you have been limiting yourself for quite some time and so maybe it, you've been comfortable with status quo that's a very Taurus uh, trait and quality that sometimes you can display but what I'm seeing is you know you need to rise up to the next level and it's speaking these mantras and speaking these words and hearing yourself say them so that you can believe it so that the next level you're matching the vibration of what it is that you're trying to manifest in your life in August is all about leveling up for you especially when it comes to your brain and your thoughts let's move on to Gemini okay Gemini you're another one that I'm seeing that is going through a space where you are needing to self-soothe almost. It's spending time in nature. It's spending time connecting with things that are gentle and natural and effortless. It's observing nature. It's observing animals and observing energy and watching how things don't force or fight. They just grow effortlessly all on their own. This is going to help to inspire you. I am seeing that from the Hierophant and the Six of Cups. Now you guys know that when I do readings, I don't go by the book, I go by my intuition and that's what it is I'm feeling. The Hierophant is all about tradition and the Six of Cups is about that gentleness and that caring and that nurturing. But what I see when I look at this card is the flower that the boy is giving to the little girl and the wisdom behind that. It's such a soft, scent, like soft, sweet gift it's, it's a nice gesture and it's looking out being looked out for it's being cared for it's being tended to it's very gentle and basically what i'm seeing is observe i don't know why but i'm i'm seeing you going out into nature gaining clarity by watching nature and watching how animals look out for each other and how plants don't fight or force they just grow and they go where they are being tended they go they grow where the environment is built for them to thrive it's not something that they push on to anything it's it and then i have these two cards for you the dandelion per, persist in pursuit and transition initiation with the walnut these two are have they have so much green around them but they are resistant to they just don't die out they have so much strength behind them but that strength is not a force it's effortless a dandelion will grow in any circumstance that's why they call it a weed but you have to see the beauty in that that it it grows where it is going it's going to grow regardless and what I'm seeing is you're being called right now in the month of August to spend more time connecting with nature and to connecting with plant energy and earth energy, even though you're a Gemini, connecting with that and observing it to gain clarity into the, your direction in your life right now. I'm seeing this as taking time and observing time and not judging time. Why is it taking this so long to manifest? Why is this taking so long to materialize? 
you actually gain clarity by looking at the current moment and seeing it for what it is and being um, protected by that and seeing the blessing in that, that you are actually being protected by things not moving faster than they need to and things not going any slower than they already have. So it's watching nature, observing nature and growing where it is that you're planted and giving to yourself in the way that is that you need. If you do not feel like you are in a space right now that is thriving and going to support your, your weight and support your abundance, I see you disconnecting from that and going into a space that will support that and I'm seeing you getting inspired by nature. Maybe you're going to the mountains, maybe you're going to the river, but something about that, changing your circumstance and it's almost like taking a gamble a little bit. Like if I take a break or if I don't go to work for this week and I go here, I might, you know, lose out on a paycheck, but I might gain so much in clarity and focus by spending that time. So that's what it is that I'm seeing and I'm really seeing this connection to tradition and cycles. And it's this it's not so much cycle with the higher font, sometimes it's this leader, this spiritual leader, but I'm seeing this leader coming from the biggest leader of all, which is Mother Nature and the cycles of time and the universe and Earth Mother, where she says everything comes in its own time. There's wisdom in that. That's what the tradition is. It's what can we expect from these cycles? What can we expect from things that have happened again and again and again and we see that in nature. That's what I'm seeing when I see the higher font. That's the tradition. And I'm also seeing that you are actually being protected by not going any faster or slower than what you currently are. And if you observe nature and see the 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 rites and the ritual in what nature does and how it acts and how it reacts, you will gain so much clarity at this moment in the month of August for the direction and the point that you're at within your life. Okay, my next sign is Cancer. Oh man, Cancer. This has been a lot for you. <laughs> this has been a lot. I don't, and I'm laughing, not because I'm laughing at you, but because I feel that, I resonate. I'm Cancer rising, so I understand. There is the Eight of Cups and there's the Five of Wands. This really brings a lot of frustration to me as I'm seeing this. As I'm feeling this, I'm seeing this as I am so tired. <laughs> I am so tired of fill in the blank. Everything, literally cancer is tired. You are known for your strength and your strength comes from your emotions and your emotions might be out of whack right now because you've been doing, 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 doing. It, you almost remind me of Aries, the message of Aries, which is I have to retreat. Now, I don't see this as a total retreat. I'm seeing this as I need to move on. The thing that is making me most afraid, is it real? It's almost as if you're fighting and you're forcing something because you're afraid that what you truly want isn't going to manifest or it's not gonna happen or the worst thing ever possible is going to manifest. I really want you to hear me I think it's time for you to face that fear, Cancer. And I'm saying this to myself as I'm saying it to you because I'm Cancer Rising and if I was going to be watching this video, I would be watching this video because I would have to choose to watch this video because I'm Cancer Rising. I'm a Virgo Sun, Virgo Moon, and Cancer Rising. So what I'm seeing is you facing, facing your fear and seeing that that fear, this, oh, this is never gonna happen, this is never going to occur, or this is going, this is gonna collapse, this is gonna fall apart, that fear is what has been propelling you and making you force and like do the most in order to make sure that that fear doesn't manifest. But the more that you dig and the more that you try and the more that you exert that energy, the worse your fear becomes and the more tired and exhausted you become. Now, what I'm seeing is that this has been, this tension, this burden that you've been carrying on your heart, this fear, this blockage, it has become your truth. And just because it, it's become your truth doesn't mean that it actually is reality. It just means that that's what you've accepted. And because of that, your action, all you can see is this worst case scenario manifesting itself. But it's not, that's not the case. And this fear which started off or this plaguing doubt or this plaguing feeling of insignificance or is this going to manifest, I feel like it's going to manifest, it has turned into a bigger weight, a bigger weight, bigger, 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 and then now all of a sudden it's a part of your karma. Because it's this cycle in your brain, it's this weight that you've taken onto your brain and onto your spirit. What I see Cancer is it's time for you to be so much more gentle with yourself. If you examine your fear and you see the truth of it, you would see that 
what is going to manifest is your thought. It's what is going to manifest. Let's say your worst fear did occur. Then what? What happens? It's almost like you're challenging this worst case scenario thinking so that you can now be free of it. And that's what it is that I'm seeing with this Eight of Cups is and this Five of Wands energy, which is I just am not going to accept this anymore for myself. This is, you know, triggered by uh, obstacles around me and where I'm at currently in my life, but I'm going to remove myself from this fear, from this worst case scenario, from this lack. I'm going to now nurture myself. I'm going to give to myself. I'm going to be gentle to myself. And I'm going to see my fear, see the truth in it, and then move past it. And it's going to give me, it's going to call all of my power back to me. This is like a little child who is so scared of looking under the bed at night. And then, you know, there could be a monster under there and everything in your brain tricks you into thinking that when as soon as the sun goes down, there's a monster under your bed. But your guardian angel, whether it be your mom, your dad, your babysitter, whoever says, come with me, come look under the bed and you will see that there is nothing for you to be afraid of. Or if there is something under your bed, we are going to pull him out. We are going to wrangle him. We are going to, you know, kick him out on the curb because he doesn't get to live under the bed anymore because he's messing with your sleep and your peace and you need to sleep so that you can play tomorrow with your friends and enjoy that. But you can't have fun with your friends if you're tired. And over time, all that fear is going to make you sick when this life is meant to be abundant to you. So what I'm seeing, my love, Cancer, is calling in your angels to and your guardian angels to help you to face your fear so that you can see that that is not your reality that it may not even exist and it's time for you to grow and that's what i'm seeing here is new growth new spring new life given to you because you've decided that i'm not going to keep fighting this thing anymore i'm actually going to move past this i surpass this i am going to take off that burden it is not mine to carry anymore i release it this cycle this karma this generational curse i'm facing it i'm examining it and in that it is not my job to conquer this for everyone i need to be gentle with myself right now and for that i move forward into fertile new growth because this is nurturing to me this is supportive of me and in that i call all my power back to me the month of August for you, Cancer, is about calling your power and gaining your power back emotionally by being gentle and easy on yourself and not allowing this worst case scenario, this fighting, this forcing, not allowing yourself to become a victim to this anymore. Because you have done enough. You are one of the power leaders of the Zodiac, but people don't recognize that and see that within you. But I do. So it's time to get back to yourself again. All right, let's talk to my Leos. And what I'm seeing for you is a few challenges, a few setbacks, but I see this as a good thing, Leo. I see this as, it's almost like icy conditions, icy circumstances around you that kind of make you feel like everything is frozen and static and not moving forward. But something about that, it's kind of, as things kind of freeze up and get static and weird, it almost is creating and breaking apart breaking open a door so that things when thing when the cycle turns and when time moves on and when divine timing manifests itself that door that was once closed to you or that that one that one opportunity that was once frozen and not moving forward now it's like when it heats up i'm seeing this with the love life and if it's not the love life and not romance then it's something that you're creating it's something that you are being creative with or that you're that you're working on privately or under the radar it's very much i mean and it makes sense too because leo is connected to the fifth house of creativity children so an expression creative expression and dating and romance so something about that it seems like there's you know there's all these challenges and obstacles but something about that is opening the door for you in the month of august that it's going to give to you a lot give to you a lot so don't look at these challenges especially with the seven of wants here don't look at this challenge as such a bad thing i'm almost seeing like you heating like your warmth especially you as leo's son like you are known for your warmth the warmth of your heart the warmth of your nurturing 
Um, and the light that it is that you bring, it's like a person that heats their hands up and puts it out, puts that energy out, it kind of melts away any resistance. So if we do have icy circumstances, it's <clears throat> you're going to move past that challenge by approaching it with life, by approaching it with love, and staying focused. This is, the Page of Cups is very warm. It's very soft, it's very romantic, it's very gentle. It's not going to be rude or disrespectful. It approaches like, do you wanna play? Do you wanna go out on a date? Let's go on a date, this is gonna be so nice. It's gonna be so romantic. And Leo, you're so good at that. It's like you're very demonstrative in such a gentle and beautiful way. Almost like this person's giving an offering. Um, that could be you or that could be someone that's giving to you. But either way, it's this newness and this innocence. It's very innocent energy that warms even the coldest hearts. And that's what it is that I'm seeing. What I'm seeing for Leo, this message is very short and sweet and to the point, is stay focused on what you are intending. Like, fo stay focused on what you want. Stay focused on where you're trying to take things. Even when the challenges start to show up or even if things start to get static, approach it with warm energy because that will melt away the resistance. It will melt away the challenge and actually inspire you and inspire others and take this into such a beautiful space. And I'm seeing this in romance. I'm seeing this with children. I'm seeing this with a lot of fifth house activity for you. So if you're creating, if you're writing a book, if you are playing with children, if you're babysitting children, if you are have a crush it's pulling from those that warmth in your life and giving it even matching that with even more warmth and more play and more fun i don't know why but i'm also seeing like frisbees and balloons and going outside in the sun and just kind of enjoying that but that's what i'm seeing for the leo so just go ahead and have fun this month um of august for the month of august now virgo let's go ahead and move to virgo I'm excited for Virgos because I feel like, well, I'm a Virgo, but I feel like we're always overlooked. I don't want that anymore. So this is just like Leo, only Virgo. <laughs> it's like this cycle that we find ourselves in, Virgos. It's this cycle. It's divine timing. It's, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. I... This is, you know, Virgos, we are, when, when do we have good luck? When do Virgos have good luck? It's almost like we're always doing the most, and I think it's because it's where we focus, and where we're always working on harvesting. We're always working on, what do we have to do because no one else is doing it? So we, all, we all always end up taking that burden on for ourselves. But Virgo, for the month of August, I need you to believe, like look me in my eyes, I need you to believe that the best is yet to come and this has nothing to do with anything that you have done. Virgos, we do the most regardless and sometimes we almost feel like if I do this then I should gain. Sometimes you don't need to do anything to receive everything. There should not be, you know, your life should not be um, an example or the epitome of I have to do, do, do in order to gain. There are so many signs in the Zodiac that get away with murder all the time, and they don't do a whole lot. They almost kind of sit back and somehow, you know, they're easy, they're effortless, they're okay, and they don't worry. And Virgo, it's time for, for you to go into that space as well. What I'm seeing is there is a cycle of events, and this has nothing to do with you working harder so that you can gain more. This is just the cycle has turned this is the way that the universe is. This is astrologically how it's planned. Divine timing will bring into your life companionship, help, children, abundance, because that's that time that you're in. So sometimes Virgos, we, and some as human beings, sometimes we say, okay, in order for me to get more, I have to do more. This month of August, stop that mindset. This month of August or that month of August is the time to abandon that mindset and to just ease into this flow of harvesting. You have already planted the seeds and you may want to continue to plant a few more seeds, but what I'm seeing is this cycle of if something left, it's going to come back. If something happened, if you called out to love, it's going to come in. 
I'm seeing this connection, this strong word of companionship. You are not meant to go this life alone, and you're not meant to spend the month of August alone. You're meant to connect with others. You're meant to connect with people that make you feel light and make you feel playful. It's very much like Leo energy. Now, I'm seeing the Strength card here and the King of Cups. This, to me, shows me that it's time, Virgos, for you to accept companionship or aspects of companionship within yourself and others where other people are going to nurture you and they are going to give to you simply because you do deserve it. Again, Virgo mine is all about work, 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 work. I'm going to be of service to... I don't know where or when that video died out, but because all of a sudden I looked up and my camera was off, but I'm going to hopefully pick up where I left off. But for the month of August, I'm seeing the Strength card and King of Cups. I think that for a lot of times, people get stuck in this mindset, especially Virgos, of I have to do, do, do in order to receive. No, that's very King of Pentacles where it's like, okay, I've put in all the work and the effort, so now I'm going to see the, F the reward pay off. This is about you being nurtured and supported by a partner who just wants to give to you and wants to support you. It's very gentle. It's very soft. It's very romantic. It shows up for you because they love you point blank period. Now the overall energy, I want to remind you guys that the overall energy of August is eternal love. Help me perceive all of the love that surrounds me so that I can feel safe receiving, expressing, and giving love. This is what is manifesting, the magician, and also the nine of cups, what you've been wanting. But you even wanting it, Virgo, it almost seems like you have it set in your brain that in order to receive in order to manifest, you have to do, do, do. No, my love, it is time for you to trust in your power, to stop forcing anything. You don't have to push, you don't have to fight. Someone is going to show up. The word companionship is really strong here because it's here in this card. It just shows up for you because you are deserving and that's it, point blank period. There is this cycle. Again, I wanna say it again, I wanna keep repeating it, Virgo, because this isn't about I have to do this in exchange for. The only thing that you have to exchange is your ability to be open and to receive and to allow yourself to be vulnerable. Allow people to see your softness and to support that and protect that. There is this softness and this gentleness and this innocence that needs to be expressed, that needs to be seen, and that will be seen by the right partner. This is, again, not something that you have to work for. It's something that is given to you. I want to read this card to you, which I haven't done for any of the other signs, but Virgo, I feel like you need to hear it. It's the card of companionship. When you fully bless and embrace your aloneness, you're ready for the ones who are meant to be with you. May I welcome this solitude, knowing it will open the way for all healthy relationships. And basically what I'm seeing when I'm seeing the word solitude is that whether you're in a relationship or whether you're not or in a partnership, the cycle of life and the cycle of karma and astrology has had it so that maybe you weren't alone, but you were so hyper-focused on working or tending, serving. Maybe you have kids, maybe you have children's children, obligation, things that you're trying to grow and build. So it's not that you might have been totally alone. For some of you guys, you have been alone. You have been without a partner. But it's almost as if you've been so focused on that and this self-sufficiency because that's what that was the word of this overall month of August. You've been so focused on that and building and creating and supporting that and helping to tend to that that you've already passed that, you've already done that and now it's time for you to have confidence in yourself, to have courage in yourself and realize that the companionship is going to harvest harvest now it is going to show up but what I want you guys to do is to connect with that infinite energy of abundance that the universe is ready to give to you and instead of forcing it instead of fighting it just allow yourself to receive it and others will see it it's a cycle that's coming into your life right now because you do deserve it if there's one sign right now that deserves companionship companionship and support it is my Virgos stop critiquing Stop analyzing, stop feeling like in order for you to receive, you have to work hard or it has to pass all these tests. That mentality needs to stop. This is about calling in what it is that you wish to deserve and calling in a partner or aspects of a partner and companionship, whether it's romantic or otherwise, that it's going to give and nurture simply because you deserve it, you've worked hard for it, and you just, you're deserving regardless whether you work hard or whether you don't. Now let me move on to my Libras. 
Okay, Libra, so for you, I'm seeing home is where the heart is, but do you know where that is? It's almost as if you are spending some time by yourself. I feel like you are kind of going through it with your home life, with your love life, with your heart. I'm gonna say your heart because it's not just romantic and intimate relationships. Those areas of your life, like where your heart is at, are being totally transformed. So it's hard for you to kind of see the blessing. It's kind of, it's hard for you to kind of focus because so much around you is changing and transforming that you might be questioning yourself, you might be doubting yourself. These circumstances around you are so rare, they're so random almost, that it's almost like, oh my gosh, this opportunity that came in, like, does this happen for everyone? Probably not. Or if you're having a bad go at luck with love or with your heart, it's almost like these circumstances are just so crazy that like, this is not normal. Like, this is not a normal situation. But what I'm seeing is, this is a space that you might be in. I, I am seeing you kind of connect back to yourself and using this light that you want to give to others, that you want to share with others in order to shine a light on the darkness of your heart, the aspects of your heart that are hidden from you that you don't fully understand, of seeing it with love and compassion and allowing that to be transformed. Why am I saying this? Well, because the Hermit card is here and the Death card. And when I'm seeing this sun or this light here, I am seeing sun, I'm seeing light, I'm seeing what is the center for you? It is your heart. That is the light. That's what the hermit is going towards. It's like, I've been kind of alone. I've been kind of isolated. I've been asking myself questions as far as what do I truly want? And then when I see that sunlight coming over the horizon, that's when my circumstances and my environment around me start to transform and starts to shift. I do want to validate your feelings and your experience, your mindset being like, it just seems like these circumstances are so rare, they're so odd, they're so weird, they're so wild. So for that, I don't want you to go this totally alone. I want you to ask the angels for guide, for guidance and to help you to move forward, forward during this transformative time as things are releasing and things are transforming around you while, so that you're not sitting in the dark for too long. I want you to kind of focus I want you to connect to your heart. It doesn't matter how cloudy the circumstances or the environment may seem around you. The light is coming from your heart and that is what is pulling you. So Libra, home is where the heart is, is your quote for some reason. I don't know if it's where do you, are you comfortable at home? Are you moving your home? Is your home transforming? Are you being pulled to a new space? Um, are you questioning where you have planted your seeds? Are you questioning um, you know, what you have here, what you've been working on, what you've been developing, whether it be a relationship, whether it be your security, there's just this connection to where do I belong? And that's what's happening for the month of August for you, Libra, is you're asking yourself, where do I belong? I wanna go where I belong. And I need to trust that all of what I've gone through and all of where I've, where all of where I've, you know, what is happening around me, it may not make sense to me, but again, the circumstances are really random and rare and strange for you. That's why it's important for you to ask Archangel Michael or your angels and your guides to work with you to help kind of clear things out and to guide you a little further. So for the month of August, what I'm seeing for you, Libra, is focusing on angels, focusing on your heart and asking them for guidance to add a light, a shine to where it is that you're going and trust that, trust that, don't doubt it, okay? Okay, let's move on to Scorpios. Okay, Scorpios, for you, what I'm seeing is adventure, I'm seeing travel, I'm seeing you taking time to explore your options. I'm seeing that for the month of August, there are there's change that needs to happen. The universe wants to bless you and the way to experience that blessing and the way to maximize those, maximize those blessings is, you know, you don't have to make a choice, a decision right now. It's like, this is your time to kind of explore what type of abundance is out there for you. For some reason, there's a connection to generations um, or family or money or resources. It's something that if you tap into it, it'll keep giving to you. It'll keep giving to you. It's not like one and done. So I'm seeing a lot of adventure and travel, and that's something that we see a lot with the Queen of Wands is that she will go at it alone. She wants to explore. She wants to see. This is not only just feminine energy. This could be masculine. This could be a man. But it's someone or something or aspects of yourself that are 
moving away from the annoyances and moving away from the status quo in order to go out and see all that is out there for you. So for my Scorpios, I'm seeing a lot of travel. I do not see you limiting yourself. There's a lot of changes happening around you. That's the way that it should be. This change, this transformation, this going out and seeing is going to bless you again and again and again. And you will find that when you put yourself in new space, new territories, maybe book that trip, maybe start studying, maybe take that, you know, go on that adventure, whatever that is, exploring your options, whatever that means for you, it's movement, it's momentum, you're going to find a lot of blessing there. And you are going, it's almost like um, a person too, for some of you guys, I'm almost seeing you kind of going to like a holy land or a sacred space and ex and exploring that and being blessed by that. But that's what the universe has here for you. It just feels like when you tap into it, you can keep on tapping into it. It's something that'll be there for the rest of your life. And that could be an experience, that could be education, that could be, you know, a cultural, cultural moment. There's something here that just, it's the gift that keeps on giving. So if you are presented in the month of August to go out, don't get bogged down by, okay, well, I should be here because that small, I'm going to stay here is going to limit you. There is a lot of abundance that is out there for you. Or maybe you need to take that initiative for yourself, Scorpio, and book that trip. Go out. Go to that sacred land. Go to those sacred experiences because those are things that no one can take away from you. And that message was short and sweet, but... It's, that's what I'm seeing for you. Now let's talk to my Sagittarius people. Okay, Sagittarius, you have some really interesting messages that are coming through. I don't know why this is, but that makes a lot of sense because the moon card is here. I'm feeling a lot of confusion. I'm seeing a lot, sometimes deception is the word. Are you deceiving yourself or others deceiving you? Sagittarius, I just feel like you want to take your time and before making any decision, even when Mercury goes direct, even when Mercury is direct, you need to observe the signs first before you make that commitment, before you make that bond. I just feel like there might be more out there for you. There, what you're committing yourself to might not give to you in the way that you're expecting. It may not be all that it seems to be. It almost, do you see how this person is kind of weighing out how much they're going to give before they give it? That's definitely going to be your energy before you commit to anything because it just seems like things are not what it is that they seem. I think that um, you, it's almost like Scorpio where you have to explore your options. I don't see this so much as you actively exploring or digging for information, it's almost like you're watching the signs and you're watching how it makes you feel before you decide. I think that you need to kind of stretch a little bit more and explore it first, how it makes you feel before you commit. Because there are certain things that are being said or not said that are there for a reason to show you that there's more to this than meets the eye. There are a few things that will make themselves public over time, probably when Mercury goes direct for you. So before you commit, definitely weigh it out and continue to weigh it out. I do not think that the month of August for you, Sagittarius, is a time for you to be making any major executive decisions because it just seems like a lot is going to be revealing itself first, okay? So another short and sweet message, but that's what I have for you. Now let's talk to my Capricorn people. Okay, Capricorn, so what I'm seeing for you is um, a new beginning. And I know like when you look at this, you'll be like, how just is this a new beginning? But this is all of what you've been carrying, all of what you've been holding on to, all of your gifts, all of your effort, all of your work, Especially you, Capricorn. You are the you are just like Virgo. You are so hardworking. You do the most, and you stay committed to it. You stay driven. All of that effort is coming to this culmination in the month of August, and with that, there is a new beginning where you I see you kind of splitting the load or sharing it with someone, or there's harmony. There's things coming together where you can I don't want to say rest because Capricorn, do you ever truly rest? But you're almost be content with this partnership, with sharing this load, with sharing this weight. And there's some 
thing here that matches your strength and opens the door for you to go on to connect to this new beginning and ultimately this fresh start because of all of the effort that you've put in to get to this point right now. There is this word of harmony where things have somehow seamlessly worked together after effort, after trying, after putting in a lot of time, attention, and energy into building something. This could be a, a commitment, this could be a bond, a relationship. It doesn't always have to be intimate, it could be platonic, it could be a working relationship, or um, in your career where you are linking up and making an alliance with someone who matches the amount of hard work, effort, energy, and commitment that you would give to it, that you would provide. And I'm seeing you finally aligning finally harmoniously coming together that key kind of opening the door and whoever the strength and the effort and the time the attention the detail and the commitment that you bring they are going to match that this is a gift it's time for you to open up to that it's something that may have been hidden from you or something that may have been elusive to you like something that you have been having a hard time finding but I'm seeing this open up. <clears throat> it's like a door. It's like a key opens the door to this hidden realm. And finally, behind that gate is this partnership that is just as equally as strong as you, that is just as committed as you, and wants to link up with you and help you. And from that, there is this new beginning, this fresh start. So that's what I'm, this is what I'm seeing. And I'm seeing that it is safe for you to rest in that <clears throat> and to share and to maybe not carry so much of it all on your own all the time. Let's talk to Aquarius. Okay, Aquarius, so there is a connection to travel. There is a connection to truth. There is a connection to divine timing, a cycle, allowing things to reveal themselves. There's a lot of change that is happening here. While this change is happening, I want you to hold on to your resources I don't want you to share too much. I don't want you to cling on to too much. I don't want to get you to give too much. There, I know that that sounds kind of weird, but it's like, watch timing, watch the truth, watch what you're hearing. Almost, Aquarius, you're really good at this, at emotionally distancing, distancing yourself from, you know, your feelings and stuff so that you can come to a resolution that works for you. I'm seeing you observing and I'm seeing you connecting to the power of prayer, speaking to God, connecting to God, connecting to the divine to help you to know what to do next. Prayer is everything for you in the month of August. Also divine timing. This is not about forcing anything. This is not about clinging on to anything. This is not about you know, giving too much. It's about trust. And it's also about observing. Intuitively, I feel like you're being called to be a little protected. I almost see temptation. I'm almost seeing you being tempted by things around you that you need to kind of, it's almost like um, attraction or this really is tempting, this really is seducing me. That's almost the word, it's like desire and seduction. So as this is happening, allow yourself to enjoy that, but don't cling too much to one thing and don't give too much of another. I'm gonna leave that open to you to receive that as you will. But I'm seeing you kind of be observant and I don't want to say digging for more information but allowing divine timing to kind of reveal to you the truth of what is, you know, next for you to do. Instead of you being seduced by something and sort of, it's almost like this word is succumb. It's like you kind of resign and like, okay, I give up or okay, I'm seduced by this or I desire this so I'm just going to relinquish my power. I'm going to give to them. I'm going to hold on to it. There's two sides to this Aquarius because you are unpredictable to say the least. So I can't tell if you're the side that wants to cling on and you know hold on to something or if you're just like, take it. I don't care. Like it's free. Just take it. Like whatever, whatever. Money comes, money goes. Like something, I just see you you know, moving with this cycle, but observing it and watching it before you are, it's like um, seduction, like, I don't know. That's kind of what I, like, I'm feeling. It's, it's almost like um, a mindset of, say, la vie, like, I know that I probably shouldn't do this, but whatever, so I'm going to do it. Or I know I should do this, but whatever, I'm going to do this. And I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna cling, I'm gonna hold on. Like, no, it's no extreme for the month of August for you, Aquarius. 
be very mindful about where you're investing who you're investing what you're giving your money your time your energy to don't cling to anything don't like be so free to give to anything again ask for god ask for the divine ask for your angels your guides to help you because there is this cycle again of truth kind of revealing itself information revealing itself um and divine timing kind of revealing all over time and you observing it and seeing it versus you being disillusioned and being seduced by this vision of things so we'll see how this will happen but honestly pray pray and that's not a warning or anything like that but i just want you to receive that message as it is now let's go ahead and move on to my pisces people who i love you guys to death oh my gosh i don't feel like i have enough pisces people in my life i would love to invite some more pisces energy into my life i have one friend that has neptune on their ascendant even though they're a leo but they bring so much pisces energy and i just resonate with them i just adore them but i would love to have more pisces energy in my life okay so what i'm seeing for my pisces people is a little bit of disappointment i'm seeing you having to make some hard cuts or you have had to make some hard cuts for your own well-being for your own independence pisces Sometimes it's like your vision of something is so much bigger and grander than the reality and that can disappoint you. I'm seeing you wanting four of wands and I'm seeing you kind of feeling this, this five of cups. And I think that you have been called lately to, and you're learning to have really firm boundaries for yourself and it's not easy. It almost seems like these things come in and it comes in with good luck and then all of a sudden it's cut out of your life and then something comes in and it's good luck and then it comes out of your life and it's causing a lot of disappointment. What you really want is stability and to not have stability or not have something that you can ground and balance yourself and center yourself on is creating imbalance and making you weepy and making you feel sad. And I'm seeing this a little bit in your relationships. What this has done for you is to teach you to be independent it has teach you to have balance, to not be so reliant or codependent on others or a thing, and to be and to find the security and the stability within yourself. But at the same time, as that has happened, it has kind of emotional. Ow, I bit my tongue. It kind of has emotionally depleted your energy. So this has been teaching you to be self reliant. But at the same time, for the month of August, it's about you restoring, you receiving, and you replenishing your energy and giving back to your energy because that. In finding that that ground, that center, that sacred space for you to give to yourself in that way and kind of water yourself. I'm really seeing this in your relationships. I'm seeing this in your romantic life. So what I want to see for you for the month of August and what I'm seeing for the month of August is you connecting to these romance angels and you connecting to romance and you focusing again on what it is that you want. Um, Nine of Cups and the Magician when it comes to eternal love, undying love, and even like soulmates and twin flames connecting to that. And also not compromising your independence in that partnership and calling that in because that is going to be balance. So that's what it is that I'm seeing for all of my signs, you guys. Wow, thank you so much. Please let me know if you love this type of video. I'm so happy that I'm getting it up when I'm getting it up, as I'm getting it up, because it's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Let me know if it works for you. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.